Hello one and all, in this one I'm going to show you how to prove that the left side here and the right sides are equal. So, I have, I have here the modulus of Z1 multiplied by Z2. Z1 and Z2 are complex numbers, remember that? So here, above my head, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to show that the left side is equal to the right side, which says that you can just multiply instead the individual moduluses or moduli. I never remember which is the correct plural form of modulus. Anyway, let's move on. So, how do we do that? What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a rule that says that the square of the modulus of a complex number z is equal to z multiplied by its complex conjugate. That's a rule that exists. It's proven in many places. So here I'm just going to assume that it's basically true. And I'm going to make use of that with this particular example as follows. Take a look. So first, I'm going to say that z1 multiplying z2 squared is equal to z1 times z2 multiplied by z1 times z2, and over both of those, as you can see, is a big complex conjugate bar. Now, you may not necessarily see the connection, obviously, but this quantity above my head here is a direct application of this one that says that the modulus of a complex number z squared is equal to z times its complex conjugate. This is exactly the same thing. The only difference is that here you have z1, z2 playing the role of z, but the form is the same, right? Because you see here, Back here for the simpler case, you have z multiplying z bar, or z conjugate. Here is z1, z2 playing the role of z, so it becomes z1, z2 multiplied. And then you multiply by its complex conjugate. Okay, then you move on as follows. So there's a basic rule that says that when you have a complex conjugate applied to a product, you can distribute that complex conjugation operator, if you like, to each value individually. So it becomes the conjugate, conjugate of z1 multiplied the conjugate of z2 instead of z1 multiplied by z2 and then you conjugate that product. So this is first conjugate each number then multiply the result. It's a little bit different. So distribute the bar over to each value individually. But after that, I'm going to proceed as follows. I'm going to regroup things. So I'm going to take z1, I group that with z1 bar. That's going to give me z1 times z1 bar. So z times its complex conjugate z1 with a bar. And then I'm going to take z2 and group that with z2 bar. It's going to give me z2 multiplying z2 bar, as shown here. So now at the next point, I'm going to do this. I'm going to simply rewrite z1 times z1 bar as z1 at absolute value. In other words, I'm taking the magnitude of z1, or modulus, and I'm squaring it. Where is this coming from? So look back here again at this powerful little rule. That rule works from left to right, but it equally, wor equally works from right to left. Equally, I meant to say. <laughs> so in other words, you could take either, for example, the modulus of a number z and square it to say that it's equal to z times z bar, or you could instead take z times z bar and write something as something squared. So back here, where, where I wrote z1 times z1 bar, I'm working that wor rule backwards to get z sub 1 modulus squared, and then z2 times z sub 2 bar. I'm working it backwards, so to speak, to get z sub 2 squared. Let's continue here with the next step. So, at the next step, I'm going to do this. Notice that it becomes, within parentheses, modulus of z1 multiplying the modulus of z2. And the reason is that back above my head here, you see that 2 is applied to the modulus of z1. It's also applied to the modulus of z2. So what you can do, because they both have a 2 here and a 2 here, in other words, we can just place it outside the parentheses at what location. Let's continue. Next stage, so that will look like the following. Across the top, let's not go too fast. What I'm going to do now is take the square root. Square root of what exactly? So look back here, right? I begin with the square of the modulus of the product of z1 and z2. I'm going to take the square root of that quantity. So that's what I'm doing on this left side of this right here. But I also discovered that that's equivalent to this expression above my head, where it's the product of the individual moduli, I want to say, and this is squared. So then I'm going to take the following over here. I'm going to take the square root of the product of z1 and z2 in their modulus form squared. So I'm taking the square roots. Why would I do that? Because lastly, what it's going to tell me is the following, that this two and a square root symbol cancel off, and that gives me just the modulus of the product of z1 and z2 is equal to, and on the right side, the same thing happens. The 2 in the exponent will cancel the square root in the top, 
and it's going to tell me that it's the modulus of z1 multiplying the modulus of z2 as the result. <laughs> and that's how you prove what we set out to prove initially back at step one. Thank you so much. Please leave a like and subscribe. I'm just going to perch myself on this equals if I can. I'll see you in another video.